This is Pastor Mike Smith at Church of the Living God. Thanks for joining us on the Living Godcast. I'd like to personally invite you to sharing and hearing from God today through the following message. If this message speaks to you, I encourage you to share this podcast with a friend. We pray God's blessings over your life. And now let's enjoy today's podcast. Okay, let's go to the book of Acts today. I know this is uh, Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday is very exciting. Um, If you've ever been to the Middle East or if you've ever been to Africa, you'd understand that it's not all that difficult to get uh, a branch-waving parade going on because you can can get some of those in in Africa, in uh, the Middle East. We've seen it happen before, kind of impromptu. Uh, there in Kenya and other places that we've been. and So it wasn't that Jesus sent ahead people and said, well, uh, get everybody a palm branch and get everybody set up. I'm going to be marching through and uh, we want to have this thing. But as Jesus was riding upon that, that donkey coming down that path, uh, the people began to be overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord and, and they saw that something was happening and people began to pull off branches of the trees and, and just... Uh, you know, just without rehearsal, without any of that, they began to sing and, and follow him and parade him uh, into, uh, you know, the, where he was going. And so, uh, you know, it's, that happened there. Also in Revelation uh, chapter 7, it tells us that when we are in heaven, people of every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and it's a number that no man can number, Revelation chapter 7 says that we as a harvest of God, as the children of God brought into that city, that we will be waving palm branches in heaven before God the Father and before Jesus Christ. And so when we're doing this on Palm Sunday, we're remembering what they did and we're looking forward to what we're going to do in heaven. Amen. Isn't that awesome? And so we, 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 like, we like Palm Sunday around here. So uh, we're glad that you're here to be a part of that. Amen. So, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 6, and I want to preach a message entitled this morning, The King is Coming. And verse 6 says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. I don't know if you realize, but we're in the uttermost part of the earth. (laughs) Because when he says Jerusalem, you know, and... uh, Judea and Samaria, that's right in the center of the earth. That's right there where Israel is today. And he said that it would go around the globe, this gospel, this kingdom. And we're living proof of that. We're literally halfway around the world. And uh, the gospel has come to us this way and it's gone the other way as well. Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. We thank you for the songs that have been sung. We thank you, Lord, for the dance that has been done, the arms that have been raised, the the branches that have been waved to God, that we have uh, worshipped you today. Father, we just pray that you would walk into this house and walk into each and every life and each and every heart today, that you would move among us, Lord, to know that we're not just involved in some kind of religious thing, but we are in a kingdom of God. And Father, that you have got great grand uh, things ahead for us that we cannot even begin to imagine. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. 
Amen. So they, when they came together, Jesus was about ready to ascend, and, uh, and he was going to go to the Father, and they are there, and they're asking Jesus, is this the time that you're going to restore again the kingdom to Israel? They're referring to Old Testament prophecy that the, the glory of Israel would return and that even David, a resurrected David, would be sitting on the throne of Israel again. Now, uh, they're asking, is this the time for the kingdom, the worldwide kingdom or the impact of Israel to come now in this time? Now, we know because we have the book of Revelation, we have the end of the story uh, that that will take place, that Jesus will come back uh, from heaven and he's going to sit on the throne over all the kingdoms and then David will arise and sit on the throne of Israel. So they're asking, according to the old prophets, God, is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And so Jesus said to them this, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, uh, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He basically was saying this. Uh, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons or the, that what God's put in his own power. But you're going to be included in that power. I, God's going to pour out his spirit upon you. He's going to give you power to begin to bring to pass the very thing that you're looking for, that Israel would be becoming a nation again. It's going to begin to happen as you take the gospel to the whole world. Amen. And so in Acts chapter 1 verse 9, it goes on and it says this, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. And so what we believe, of course, is going to happen is that Jesus is going to come again. That there's a second coming, and how can you not believe that with Scripture like this, right? That this same Jesus that just ascended, can you imagine? He's talking with them, they're conversing, and then Jesus basically just steps on a cloud and elevates up into heaven. He just begins to float through the air, and he's going there. And so the angels come and say, okay, guys, uh, now that he is gone there, you've got some work to do. Why are you just standing here gazing into heaven? But this same Jesus, he didn't say another Messiah, he didn't say another name. He didn't say there would be a myriad of names, a myriad of ways. He said, no, this same Jesus that just ascended unto the Father will someday descend uh, from the Father and he will be in the air and he's going to catch us away. We'll see that. And so we see exactly what he is saying as we are approaching Easter this year, that Jesus has come, but Jesus will come also that there is a coming of the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now the word here for asleep, of course, is that they were deceased. So he's talking about people that have uh, believed in the Lord. They have had their faith. They have kept their faith throughout their lifetime. Their physical body has died, but their soul and spirit has gone to heaven. And so he tells them uh, that, you know, don't, don't worry about those that have already gone, that we that are alive and we that are remaining unto the coming of the Lord, uh, we're not going to hinder those that have already died. And he goes on and explains more in verse 16. He says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. That's not the president. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
And so we see it made very, very clear, even there in the book of Thessalonians, when he said that the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout. We know from other scripture that it's going to be such a shout that it's going to sound like a trumpet has been blown around the world all at the same time. And so it's not an angel coming down from heaven. It's not a prophet coming down from heaven. It's not one of the apostles coming down from heaven, but the one that ascended to the Father is the same one that shall descend from the Father, and that is none less than the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. I say today to you, the King is coming. Hallelujah. The King is coming. And so, you know, when we talk about the coming of the Lord, it, it immediately puts people in several different categories. Some people are immediately unbelieving. They, they just say, no, it's never, you know, it hasn't happened yet. You know, I've heard many, many people say, I've heard all my life that Jesus is coming again and he hasn't come. I just don't guess he's coming. Well, how old are you? <laughs> you know, are you 55 are you at 60? Are you 70? Are you 80? Uh, th those are glimpses of life. Amen. That's just a short time of life. And then others, you know, may say, well, uh, you know, I, I was kind of like this, honestly, in the 70s. Because I tell you, they had us talked pretty good into it in the late 60s and 70s that Jesus was going to be coming. Right? The books like The Late Great Planet Earth. Anybody remember that one? You know, and then you come into the 80s where there's 88 reasons why the Lord had to come in the 80s. Uh, you know, they were saying in particular 1988, 40 years from Israel becoming a nation in 1948, all of that. No, it wasn't those times. But because that man has missed the time does not mean that there is not a time. Amen? Because brother and sister, he said, you don't know. You don't know the day. You don't know the hour. He said, nobody's going to write a best-selling book and tell you when he's coming. Okay? But when he comes... When he comes, he's going to come. The Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout. I promise you this. You won't have to check with anybody else. Was that the shout of the Lord? Because when he shouts in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be caught up in the air with him, and we will know that the Lord has come. Amen? And the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So what we have now, many loved ones, I'm sure everyone here has got loved ones that have already gone to heaven. You were there at the funeral. Their body was lowered into the ground. But we know that their soul and spirit is with the Lord. Uh, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we know all of our loved ones are there and that they are with the Lord. But uh, their soul and their spirit is going to rejoin with their body that is in the grave, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then all we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, and we will meet them in the air, us and them and Jesus in the air. Amen. And so then it says this, uh, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So once this happens, we are with him, and we will ever be with the Lord. So he said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, our theme for Easter, as I've said earlier, is that he still lives. And he does still live. And there's still a plan of God. The plan of God is not over. The, the, the uh, fulfillment of all of what God had planned for Adam's race is not quite over yet. But there's coming a time that the consummation of all of these things will happen. And brother and sister, we're going to spend many ages in his glory from now on talking about how faithful God is. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. And so he said, comfort one another with these words. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church and he says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So Paul's saying, you know what, guys? It's, it's better. There's a better existence. It's, it's better than being here on this earth. And I love life. And I love living life, and I'm grateful for the blessings of God in my life. But he said, man, it's, it's preferable to be out of the body and in the presence of the Lord. 
Amen. All these, these people that have already gone before us, how well that they are. Amen. Their worship before God. All that is happening right now. He says it's better. It's better to be with the Lord than it is to be here. So we're going to go to a better place and into a better situation. Uh, Paul also writing to the churches of Thessalonica, the region of Thessalonica, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1 says this, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Hmm. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, is travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And so it's Paul's writing to the churches of the region of Thessalonica. He says to them that you have no need for me to write to you of the times and the seasons, because you've already been taught and you've already learned that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night comes like a thief in the night. That when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman that goes into travail. And so he is bringing this out that the, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now I want to tell you something. Light and darkness in this, this passage, is uh, spir- these are spiritual conditions. When he says... That, uh, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, he's not really saying that it's going to be nighttime. One of the reasons he cannot say that is because it's always daylight somewhere. Right? I, I've flown many, many miles. I've, flown, I've, I've watched the sun take over the shadows of the night as we were in airplanes, and watch the light go, and watch street lights down. We were coming up Africa, uh, over Egypt and places, and begin to see the lights going off down there, because the light was coming, and the darkness was fleeing the light. Amen? And so, there's no place on earth that he could come in the middle of the night for everybody, okay? He's not talking about the time of day. He's talking about two spiritual conditions, There are people of light and there's people of darkness, and you get to choose. You get to choose which one that you will be. So when he says, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, he's saying really that he comes as a thief to those that are of the night, to those people who are of the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now look at uh, uh, verse 4, just the next verse. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. See, that brings it all around, right? Okay, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So he validates what I've just told you. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. So now he's talking about the condition of true brethren, all right? We'd say true brothers and sisters of the gospel. People that have not corrupted the gospel, the simple gospel of Jesus Christ, that God had one son and he sent him to this earth, that he died upon the cross of Calvary for our sins, that he was striped for our healing. Amen. That he was buried, but that he rose again on the third day. Amen. You, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You're in the light. You know the truth. You know what's going to happen. So whenever he comes, you're not going to be like somebody uh, that a thief broke into their house. You've been watching. You've been waiting. You've been expecting the coming of the Lord. It's going to come to you as a daylight time. We're of the daylight. And the world that is trying to get to Jesus or get to God any other way but Jesus. The world through all of their religions and all of their chanting and all of their bowing before images. There's billions of people that bow their knees to images of trees or wooden images and silver and gold and they pray to this thing made out of a tree or gold or silver and they're asking for answers and they never get any. They never get any answered prayers. 
They never do because those idols are dumb. They cannot hear. They cannot speak. They do not live. They are not God. We are not of children of the darkness. We are children of the light. We understand that He's coming. Now let's be ready. And let's not only be ready that He's coming, but let's be active. Let's take the life that we have and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Maybe they're not in the place right now for you to go right into rapture theology or for you to go into second coming theology, but you could certainly with anybody start with, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? may take you a while to get them into rapture teaching, but what they can know is that God loved the world. Amen? God loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son that He allowed mere men to crucify Him, to bury Him, to mock Him, to spit in His face, to do all of this shame upon Him. And Jesus let Him do that. But that same man that they crucified, that same man that was buried, that is the man that rose again. That is the man that ascended right there as we began in Acts chapter 1. He ascended up to heaven and He that ascended to God is the same one that will de sin from God. Hallelujah. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. The King is coming. Amen. 2 Peter 1, 19 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein too you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. When he tells us that we are children of light, he's not talking about children of daytime. He's talking about the children of the day star. The day star. That is Jesus Christ. He said, take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place. He said, I know you live in a dark place. I know you're in culture. You're in society. You work among people. You live among people. You're related to people that are of darkness. They don't believe. But he said, you're not. Uh, you're not living like that. You're not. But he said there's a light. Amen. Yeah, take heed as a light that shines in a dark place. We used to have a dark place. We used to be in darkness. But then, amen, the day star began to arise in our hearts. It's the day star in your heart. Amen. In verse 5, he said, you are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Brother and sister, I do not believe that the Scripture could get any clearer. That there are two conditions described in these Scriptures as light and darkness. And that there is a choice that every human being has. That they can choose to follow light or to be a part of the night, a part of the darkness. Oh, I know I was raised among many that went to church that eventually fell out. You know, you got to really know the Lord if you're going to survive church. I mean, you got to know the Lord with all your heart. Because, you know, there's people at church and there's people at home. We're all people. We just might as well give each other a lot of grace, right? We just might as well love each other, give grace to one another. But I tell you what, it's not people getting us to heaven. It's Jesus getting us to heaven. The King is coming. The King is coming. Amen. And so the light and darkness are spiritual conditions. He said, because you've received Jesus, you are all the children of light. Amen. You're the children of the day. We're not of the night. Have you ever noticed how that there's a whole different society out after dark? Yeah. Boy, I tell you, I've come into some places after dark and I wondered what planet I was on. I'm just, you know... I'm just saying. 
But I want you to know, God loves those people. Jesus died for those people. His blood is enough to wash away their sins. Amen. He can give them a new name and a new destination and bring them out of night and into the light. Amen. Amen. I know we're coming to Easter and I'm preaching rapture. I'm preaching the second coming of the Lord. That's, that's the next message. After the resurrection, after the ascension, sitting at the right hand of the Father, the next message of the gospel is He's coming back. He's going to return. Amen. And so as people of the light, He said, don't, don't get rocked to sleep. Don't get rocked to sleep with society. Don't just blend in. Don't just do what they do, say what they say. Don't get rocked to sleep. Amen. Be sober. People have been telling me all my life to just take it easy. Can you just lighten up? Evidently, I cannot. All right. I'm 55 now, and I've just had to finally accept I've, I cannot lighten up. So if you want to talk to God about it, you go ahead. I've already had that conversation, but you go right ahead. <laughs> I believe with all of my heart that our loved ones that have died in faith are more alive than they've ever been in their lives. I believe they are well and they are happy and they are seeing the King sit on the throne. I believe that they're interceding for us. That's what the book of Romans told us. A great cloud of witnesses are praying for us. Amen. I believe it. You're not going to talk me out of it. Amen. I've looked up into the sky and called upon that name and answers come. Amen. I've prayed for things that only God could do and they happened. Praise God. Yes. As we come to the truth, He still lives. He still lives. And it's that living Savior that's going to call us home. Amen. Amen. Stand with me. Thank you for joining us on the Living Godcast. We hope you've enjoyed the message. For more information, we invite you to check us out online at www.wincitycolg.com or on Facebook. You can also download our app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Just search for Church of the Living God. We hope you have a blessed day.